Hey all, uh, just wanted to record a quick video. Um, the other day, somebody uh, attempted to rob me at gunpoint uh, in my neighborhood, and a lot of people were asking about more details about it. So I just wanted to record a quick video. My name is Nick Schillingford. I'm a registered nurse. I live in South Minneapolis. I also uh, am the founder of Urban Cabin Studios and the uh, host of Socialist News and Views. So, yeah, I just wanted to let people know. So, um, this happened on election day. Uh, I had already voted a long time ago uh, for Cornell West um, in the early voting location. So, I wasn't voting on election day, but on election day, um, I did have some things going on. We did uh, go and do a standout uh, for uh, Cornell West um, over in North Minneapolis on uh, North Lowry and North Emerson with signs uh, calling for ending the funding for Israel, Minnesota divestment from uh, apartheid Israel, vote Cornell West signs. Got a lot of good reactions to that. Um, and then uh came back to my house um and a lot of days uh recently i've been uh having a regular uh practice a lot of people know uh, we have a socialist news and views free books table uh as well uh that was originally created to promote our uh the podcast socialist news and views but um it's kind of taken on a life of its own so i try to get out to different events with free books including the really really free market I've also recently uh, been going around to a lot of the little free libraries in the neighborhood, putting in some books, moving some books around, organizing some cases like fixing the little libraries if there's uh, things that are broken as much as I can. I don't have a lot of uh, talent at that, but I've been making that a regular thing to get myself out walking because I feel like the last year I haven't been walking as much. So I get out and do a little circle and hit a bunch of the free libraries over maybe an hour walk or something like that. Uh, so on uh, election day, I was doing the same thing. Um, I left a little before four o'clock um, in the afternoon and uh, I was going around to little free libraries. And I, uh, I think originally I told folks I was at like 41st Avenue and 34, 35th Street. Um, that's not entirely uh, accurate. I ended up going back to look and the location um, where uh, they attempted to rob me was Actually, 40th Avenue, I believe, between 35th uh, Street and 36th Street. So I think that's still the Howe neighborhood. That's my neighborhood. Um, and I was going around to the little free libraries. Um, and I got to one little free library. And I, uh, you know, was sorting stuff, um, you know, putting some books in, putting some books in my bag. You know, if there's anything I'm interested in, I grab that. So I had my head kind of in this little free library. You know, I was organizing. There was not really anybody around. It was raining. Um, you know, I had my raincoat on. I was actually kind of uh, soaked, um, digging around the little free library. And I heard a car door uh, shutting behind me. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe this is the um, this is the owner of this house. They're coming back and they're going to go in, you know, past the little free library. And I was just kind of wondering in my head, I wonder if they're going to like say anything to me or say hi or ask me what I'm doing with the library. Um, because the day before I had run into somebody who was coming out of the house with one of the really free libraries and they didn't react to me at all. They didn't say anything. They didn't look at me. They just walked past me and went on their walk, which was fine. I wasn't necessarily looking to talk to them. I just wondered if they'd have anything to say. So I thought, you know, somebody was getting their groceries out or getting out of their car. I heard some, you know, like I said, a car door shut behind me. And I was digging around in there and I found a copy of uh, the complete Beatrix Potter uh, DVD. And I, uh, I thought, well, you know, these are some of the story, some stories from my childhood. I had a little uh, Beatrix Potter uh, book. I was like, I should look through some of those again and, um, you know, see what that was all about. And I thought, well, I'm probably not going to do it. I got enough books to read. So I was like, maybe if I get it as a DVD, I can pop it on TV and watch it. So I'm, that's what I'm thinking about uh at the time and somebody comes right up next to me um you know just uh you know almost touching me um and I'm like huh why you know why is this person next to me and I start looking over and they're 
brandishing a gun, like slightly hidden under their jacket. Uh, but you can see that they have some thing that looks like a gun. I don't know anything about guns, um, but it had a longer barrel on it, maybe like a silencer or something. Um, and they were like, you know, starting to cock the gun a little bit. Um, only, I don't know if it was cocking They were just kind of like sliding the thing back and forth, uh, but it didn't appear to be clicking or making a noise. And, uh, I looked up, um, I was also thinking like, oh gosh, this person's close to me. Um, you know, I didn't have a mask on or anything and I've been very cautious about COVID. So one of the first things I thought, which is kind of, uh, maybe silly, but I like looked up and he had like a mask on and I was like, well, this has got a mask on, uh, which is kind of a silly thing to think, obviously. Um, but you know, my brain doesn't always work the way, uh, other people's does anyway. Uh, so he's cocking the gun and he said, you know, give me everything you got gang. And you never know how you're going to react in that situation. You know, I thought about it. I was recording, a uh, special report for my podcast recently about police, about public safety, you know, and I was thinking specifically, you know, how would I behave if I was a victim of crime like that? Um, you know, recently, and I didn't really know. And, you know, so, but yeah, whatever. My reaction was not to give him my stuff. I don't know why. Um, you know, my immediate reaction, I didn't really feel super nervous in the moment. Uh, I just, my immediate reaction was thinking about myself. Okay. This guy has a gun. You know, I was kind of thinking like, this is going to be, you know, not good, <laughs> uh, obviously. But, um, and then I was thinking about like, you know, this is just a bad decision for this person too. My impression was they were like a 14 or 15 year old kid. Somebody else uh, did get robbed. I think before me, um, they, I think I heard somebody say they estimated the person was like 20. I don't know. Um, so he said, you know, give me everything you got gang. And I said, I think I said, I don't have anything for you. Um, and I said, I think you should leave. Maybe I said, that's all. And at that point, uh, he backed up a little bit more. I think he still had the gun kind of in his, in his coat, like pointed down. Um, and he was like fiddling with it. And, um, he said, just take everything you got and throw it on the ground. Just, just throw everything you got on the ground. And I was like, I think you should leave. I mean, to be honest, I was just thinking about, I didn't want him to do this. I just wanted him to leave and not do this. I don't know. I just wanted it to be over basically. Um, and I don't know, like I said, something, a lot of people said, well, you would just like give him the stuff and then it would be over. I don't know. That was not how I felt in the moment. It would happen very quickly. And I said, you know, I think you should leave. And I pointed and I kind of nodded like behind him, like towards down the street. Cause I could tell he was getting a little antsy or whatever. And, um, he pointed the gun at me. That was the point when I was obviously like feeling, you know, some serious, uh, uh, nervousness, I guess. Um, he pointed the gun at me and, uh, I just put my hand up in front of the gun like that. Like he was standing far enough away that I could put my hand straight out in front of me, like kind of towards the front of the, the gun. Um, and I said, you know, I think you need to leave. And at that point he looked behind him. Cause I mean, all this happened real fast. He looked behind him where I'd pointed before. Cause he kind of was thinking maybe somebody was coming or something was happening. He looked behind him and, uh, then he looked back at me um, and he said, do you think you're tough gang? And I said, I don't think I'm tough. I just think you need to leave. And then he put the gun down a little bit, like somewhat down, but it was still out of his coat. And then somebody was driving up the street in a, in a SUV or something. And then he like put the gun back in his coat, like hidden away more. And then he said, all right, all right, all right. And he started backing up. And then he got into a vehicle, which I didn't even know he came in a vehicle. I thought he might've just walked up. I was just hoping he was going to walk away. Like that was what I was immediately hoping for was like, I think you should leave. And then he would just leave. Um, I don't know. Uh, I know it sounds weird. A lot of people don't understand that, but that was my, that was my thought. Um, I just spoke calmly. And uh, yeah, he got in his car. It was a blue car with a broken wing mirror. And uh, he drove away. Uh, originally, I was, you know, I was already backing away a little bit. I was thinking, you know, as soon as he's like a certain distance away from me, I'm going to like take off um, if he doesn't go anywhere. But since he went somewhere, I was like, I'm just going to stay right here. I was in the middle of the block. I was like, you know, I don't want him to like 
come back and like meet him right at a corner. And then I'm like right in his zone again. So I stayed right at the uh, really, really free library, wherever I was, I finished like organizing up the stuff and I was kind of like looking both ways to see if he was like coming again or anything. Um, and he didn't come back. Uh, so I took my Beatrix Potter DVDs and I uh, walked towards where there was more people around. Cause I definitely noticed like right after he came, like, okay, this is kind of an isolated, like there's not a lot of people on this street right now. I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings as much as I usually would for some reason. So I was like, let's go to where there's like more people. So I went down to 42nd Avenue, which is like a main road. Um, and I had to go to the store anyway. So I went there, went to the store, went home and then told my, uh, wife and uh, family about it. And, uh, you know, everybody was like, Oh, that's really scary. To be honest, I didn't feel anxious in the moment. Um, you know, I felt some anxiety a little bit afterwards. Um, I've always had a lot worse, like, per, you know, uh, 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 um, I've had a lot worse, uh, anxiety, like waiting for things to happen, like, um, anticipatory anxiety. So if somebody said, Oh, somebody's going to come rob you in like 10 minutes, I'd probably be like, you know, at gunpoint, I'd be super anxious about that. But in the moment that it was happening, I was just thinking, I want this to end somehow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was what happened. Um, you know, people ask if I'm traumatized, I don't feel traumatized right now. I didn't report anything to uh, police because I don't, you know, I think it's more likely I'd become friends with the guy that robbed me in like a couple of years, uh, you know, maybe when he makes some different decisions about what he's doing, then I would have a good experience with the police. That's just my honest feeling. Um, I don't have anything, haven't had any positive experiences with the police. Um, so yeah, so that was my story. Um, there was some people that were had things taken. He took somebody's EBT card, I heard, which is pretty messed up. Um, I believe they reported uh, all that info. Um, I don't know anything about guns. I don't know anything about cars. I really don't have anything to add, um, except that I thought he was younger than what the other person said. Um, you know, it doesn't mean just because I didn't, you know, choose to report it to the police that I don't think there should be like any consequences for, you know, somebody doing that. It is definitely messed up. Like I said, you know, stealing somebody's EBT card is definitely really messed up. Um, but you know, to be honest, I just wish I like could, could figure out who his mom was or who his grandma was or something. I don't know. I just feel like that's, you know, the, the last time I had some young person, it was younger than this person, like stealing stuff from me. I talked to their family, uh, and I had all the stuff returned and I was like, just like, can this not happen again? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, the thing that was, you know, surprising, obviously it was in my own neighborhood. Um, which, you know, I've been all over the cities, uh, twin cities. Um, yeah, I wasn't really thinking about anything happening like right in my own uh, backyard necessarily. Um, but yeah, you just got to keep your eyes open wherever you are. Um, there's no like, you know, place in many, you know, place in the cities or even in the suburbs that's safe and another place that's not safe, you know, things can happen anytime. Um, you know, just be aware. Uh, so yeah, that was what happened to me. Um, it was definitely not fun. Um, I just tried to stay calm, speak slowly, not do anything excitable, not escalate, try to de-escalate the situation. Um, yeah, had different other things I was thinking about doing, you know, like, I mean, I have like the worst phone ever. A lot of times people are like going after phones. My phone is, you can't even see, but it's all cracked. It's like the cheapest phone that exists anyway. I was going to be like, do you really want this? You know, maybe you just leave. But anyway, I've rambled enough. Um, Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any other thoughts or questions, uh, <laughs> feel free to reach out. Solidarity.